Zah, welcome to Property Insights, mate. Thank you, Mark. Thank Long you time me. since I've seen you. Mm -hmm. um, I think last time I saw you, uh, well, you were on my shorts or my jacket or something in one fight I was having. I mean, I, I think it was probably like maybe 10 years ago um, when I was fighting one of the police nights. Um, and and you, you won. I won that one, yeah. Um, uh, must yeah. have been the sponsor. Must have been the sponsor, mate. <laughs> must have been the sponsor. Uh, but, but, uh, but you're in a totally different world today. Um, so you're in Luxland Investments. You've got your own podcast. Yep. Take me through it. So what's Luxland Investments and what is, what's the book about? Tell me about it. Okay, so Luxland Investments started in 2014 as a small boutique development firm. Um, and we bought a site and it was only for four townhouses. Um, it was up in Newcastle. We just wanted to cut our teeth on development. Um, it already owned, we already owned investment properties, uh, which we bought from 2008. We just wanted to give it a crack. Um, we completed the development, um, realized that developing is a lot harder than it actually is. And we didn't make as much as money as we thought we would, but. So where the, are the pitfalls then? Just on that. Where well, are the pitfalls? I think what happened was it was a great little project that we did to get started. Um, you know, we got to know the, the whole contract process, dealing with builders and all of that sort of thing. But on the back end, when we sold them, we actually sold them to friends. And a lot of friends were starting to come to me ask, asking me for advice on property investment. And they, they said, these buyers of these townhouses that we built said, you should create a business that helps clients buy property. So I thought, take a backward step from developing and start helping people get into the property market. Um, and it just flowed on from there. So we're almost 10 years old. And um, yeah, here we are, you know, helping clients, everyday Australians try and get into the market. So when you, how do you do that? Like what's your process? Do you have a platform or do you sort of, um, you know, the top of the funnel is your podcast? And if so, what's the podcast about? Yeah, so the podcast is about, I guess, generally forming the right mindset to get into the market. So we're big on rent vesting because we're here based in Sydney where predominantly most of our clients are, and it's just too expensive. To buy so property rent here. vesting meaning uh, buy where you can afford and rent where you want to live. Of course, yeah. yeah. So it, it's been a strategy that I use mm -hmm. till this day. Um, I find that Sydney is just super unaffordable, and you can get well, where better, you want to live in Sydney. Super. Where you want to live, yeah, yeah. right? And you know you can get better value in other markets. And I bought my first property on the Central Coast because that's where I grew up. Uh, back in two thousand and eight, for three hundred and forty thousand um, dollars, I still own that property today. 1.2 million it's worth. Um, and look, I had to bust my ass to try and get a deposit together, you know, $70,000 from three jobs. Like it was, it was hard back then, 2008, um, just like it's hard now. But if I was to try and buy something in Sydney back then to live here, I just would have been too stretched. So it's sort of, it remains unchanged in today's market. Yeah. We, we all, bitch and complain about it being too expensive and unaffordable and all of that sort of thing. But there are possibilities to get exposure in other markets, in different asset types, so that you still have your wealth growing in the background. And I actually think it's much easier rent vesting than, I guess, getting the liability of your own mortgage and having to pay it yourself. I understand the philosophy of rent vesting and I, I quite like it. So you rent where you want to live, maybe you hang out with your mates, three or four of you can whatever and because the yield on the rents for a very expensive property that would cost you a fortune to buy is pretty low so you know like you're talking one and a half two percent yield on a property so if it's a, a 10 million dollar property you could probably go and rent it for you know, 1200 bucks a week you know sure. or 30 whatever but if you're going to go buy and have to pay interest you're going to have to pay a fortune plus hard to save the deposit for that sort of joint so what you do is you rent that place you might two or three out it all good then, but of course, you don't want to just be paying rent all your life. So you've got to get into the property market. So the philosophy about rent vest is you go buy in a region, for ha perhaps, like as you said, Central Coast, um, Newcastle, anywhere, anywhere. But you go buy where you can afford to borrow and rent that joint out to whoever wants to live there. Of course. That's, that's the deal? That's the deal. So what, what, in, in terms of the difference between the price, for example, here in Sydney, relative to other places, 
What are you sort of seeing happen at the moment? Are you sort of seeing, is it Central Coast still the good deal or is it Newcastle or or is it further up? Is it Ballina? What, what are we talking about? Down south? Let's say New South Wales. New South Wales, I think we've, it's all kind of quite expensive now. Um, even Newcastle Central Coast, you know, we're, we're struggling to find good sites in Newcastle at the moment. Um, we're finding um, a lot of value in southeast Queensland and Melbourne. Um, South Queensland, can you just define that for me though? Where, are we talking about the Gold Coast or are we talking all the way up to Noosa? So we're, we focus on Brisbane, in between Brisbane to Sunshine Coast. Right. So Brisbane. we're big on that Moreton Bay region area. Oh, I love that area. Yeah, really, really nice. Good roads now. They, yeah, they infrastructure's built, great. They built um, a road, which is, took forever, but like it's a three lane road going both directions, six lanes. Um, yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, and vacancy rates are at an all-time low. So we, Yes, so below 1%. So we've got, we've talk, we talk about, is it Deception Bay? Uh, Mor- Deception Bay, yeah. Moray Field, Bourbon Gary, those, those type of regions. Right. We're seeing really good value there. They're not far from the water either, so the lifestyle Very is close. pretty good. Yeah, well, we're actually doing a project now in Deception Bay, um, and we're 100 metres from the water. You can get a brand new house and land for 750 grand. Like, it's awesome value, you know? So, so... So just on that, because um, uh, it's funny you should say that place because I've always thought it's a pretty area, um, and I, I might ask you now though is, is the infrastructure starting to get better? Like what I mean by that is, the you know someone can go get a good coffee. Um, Look, it's gentrifying now, Mark. Yeah, right? It is, it like is, it, is it? It, it's not there yet, but it is gentrifying, and this is where the investment takes place now. Um, and a lot of people will go up there and goes, oh, it's a bit of a shithole, right? Mm. Well, it is now. Mm. Right, but wait till four, five, ten years down the track because our philosophy is just buy really, really well, but never sell it. Right, you hold on to them forever. So, if you look at it, you know, in the next 20, 30, 40 years, hopefully that's how long you hold the, the asset for. Um, and then obviously the prop, the, the market will gentrify from there on, um, you're looking at pretty good value, right? You don't want to buy right at the top in, say, the Vaucluses of southeast Queensland and then, you know, it, it costs you a fortune to hold on to that property for the next 10, years. Then you get yourself into trouble and you get pressure and then you end up selling the bloody thing because it's too expensive. How important is it for you, Zah, that um, if, in terms of your philosophy, that you um, buy, let's call it house land? So, I mean, or, or sh- like if I got 750, should I be buying – in new market, an apartment, or would you rather me buy a house at block of land further up in Moreton Bay area? So we we actually advise our clients to build a portfolio of a diverse asset types, so apartments, townhouses, and houses. Um, houses generally appreciate in value with, with capital growth because of the land component, whereas if you select the right apartment, for example, it's more of a rental growth strategy. And a lot of people forget about rental growth. So, for example, if you've got a two-bedroom apartment in Bondi, for example, right, it's very hard to afford a, uh, a house in Bondi, but you could probably afford uh, an apartment in Bondi if you're on an average income, right, or above average here in Bondi. Um, if you need to jack the rents up there, you've got to think about the people who live there. So the people that live there, generally there could be a professional couple, double income, no kids, They've got a lot of disposable income. They're in an area where jobs are paying quite well. So a $50, $60, $70 increase in rents is not really going to hurt them. Which could be a 5% increase. Of course. In one hit. Exactly. And and, and if you did it twice in a year, that's 10%. And And they'd probably cop it. Yeah. Right? They're not going to move out. but Because it's more expensive to move out if they can find a place to move to. In this current market too. But with house and land, you tend to be, you know, a bit further away from the CBDs. So who lives there? It could be a family of five. So there's three dependents. Uh, Maybe the wife doesn't work. They're reliant on a single income of maybe 150 grand a year. You put the rent up by 60, 70 bucks. They're going to potentially consider moving out. So the rental growth on the houses isn't as much as, say, a well-selected apartment. So what we try and tell our clients is, you want to take a bit from every demographic so you're quite diversified. So where we're seeing value now is uh, Melbourne apartments and townhouses. Houses are just way too expensive when you in say Melbourne, Melbourne now. You talk, what Melbourne means the whole of Melbourne or you're talking about Melbourne, the CBD area? Inner to middle ring. So in Australia, um, it's very different to say Asian countries where 
they uh, love living in the CBD, mm. right? Uh, the CBD, for example, it has uh, no height restrictions, so you can get this oversupply of, of, of property there. But local Australians, they want to live in the cool suburbs, you know, like the Fitzroys, the uh, the Collingwoods, the um, Essendons, you know, those are the prestige cool suburbs. So we try and focus on those areas. We're doing townhouses in sort of the middle ring, Reservoir, Had Hadfield. We're looking at really good value for money there. Like we're picking up sites that can build four or five townhouses on them for like eight, 900 grand. That's unbelievable value. If you compare that to Sydney, it's the, the affordability is there. Same in Southeast Queensland. So Southeast Queensland, it's townhouses and houses, not quite apartments because, um, you know, it, ha it hasn't really adapted to that style of living yet. The Queenslanders yet. aren't quite there yet. No. So they like the houses and, and, and look, they're, they're, they're still affordable, right? Like I'll give you an example. We did a, a deal two, three years ago in a suburb called Fig Tree Pocket. Yep. Seven Ks from the CBD. I would compare it to a Randwick in, in, in Sydney. Now, the incomes in that area with Randwick and Fig Tree Pocket are exactly the same, right? If you go on SQM research, it'll tell you it's about um, 3,800 a week of combined family income, right? So it's the demographics are the same. We did this house and land for a million dollars. Now it's worth two million. You, you sold for a million bucks? No, we did it for a million, right? It we cost, bought co it. It yeah. you a million bucks. Yeah, yeah, 500 for the land, 500 for the build. Yep. Got it valued only six months ago for two million, right? And that's still considered cheap, Mark, because if you look at Randwick, the median house price is about four million bucks. Fig tree pocket median house price is one point eight. So if you look at the people that live there, their incomes are the same. It's the same demographic that lives there. So where are people going to flock to? Where the affordability is? They get more bang for buck. Yeah. And this is where, and that's just an example, right? It doesn't have to be Randwick to, to Fig Tree Pocket. But no, it's there a good are, example. Uh, it's it? a very good one because it's very clear. Yeah, yeah. And this is where we try and show our clients, hey, you can park your capital in other markets where you're going to get better value for money. And not only investors are going to flock there, but owner occupiers, emotional buyers are going to flock there to drive up pricing, which is essentially your profit. Are you seeing much more in your research or the Lewis Christopher's uh, SQM's research, um, are you finding population migration into places like Southeast Queensland and uh, and in particular, you know, north of Brisbane? Um, are you seeing like people moving up there to live there? Yeah, I mean, well, we're we hearing about obviously we get lots of population growth in, in Sydney, Melbourne from overseas because that's where the jobs are. Well, the perception that's where jobs are, um, but are you seeing people? flock up those places yeah so it's we're seeing it every day right and obviously the data shows it as well the net migration in terms of coming from melbourne and sydney is just continuously increasing to southeast queensland um i think the migrants are coming here like you said to sydney and melbourne because that's all they know that's all they know um but the locals are sort of going well i know the market um i'm seeing for example that ranwick and fig tree comparison I'll sell the house here for four million bucks, go and buy a fig tree pocket for two million, right? And have two million tax free to live off. I mean, that's probably more for the wealthy people, but even for the guys that are just getting started in the working class, it sort of makes a lot of sense to go up there. And there's jobs up there, Mark. I was going to say, because the assumption of there is that I can get a job up there. I mean, let's say I'm not retired and I'm in my forties, um, whatever. Uh, I still need a job, um, but the assumption is that there is a job up there. So are you are you saying that, you know, there's – because before there wasn't as many jobs in Brisbane, bottom line, um, and people stayed here in Sydney or Melbourne because that's where the jobs are, most of the jobs. Um, are you seeing a, a change, a lifestyle change in terms of jobs? In other words, and because people work from home a lot more as well. Yeah, so the guys that can work from home, they're sort of – thinking, well, why do I stay here, yeah, right? Totally. Like, why would I pay 1200 bucks a week for a, for a two bedroom apartment when I can pay six, 700 bucks a week up north, right? Um, and the same goes for tradesmen. Like, you can't get a tradie, Southeast Queensland. I, I actually think they're getting paid more than doctors and lawyers up there. Yeah, yeah. There's a massive shortage, you know? And I guess that comes down to a majority of factors like, you know, the, the government spending so much on infrastructure and it's pulling them away from the private work and all of that sort of thing. But 
the money's there, right? So there, I guess there are certain industries where, um, you know, you might not find a job as easily. That could be something like finance and all of that sort of thing. Um, but, you know, generally speaking, tradies are getting paid the best up there right now. I wish I could turn back time and become a tradesman. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I mean, I, but I know what it's, I, 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 yeah, I, the building and finding a tradesman who's competent and can build for a price that, that's affordable, anywhere north of Ballina is like nearly impossible. Like if they can start, I'll, say, oh, we'll, I'll do it in a year's time. I can start a year's time. I mean, the amount of uh, flow of jobs that they've got is crazy. And as a result of they just charge you whatever they can. And as a result of they're making shit loads of money. And as a result of that, as you say, if I'm a, if I'm a young guy and I'm in Sydney and I'm a carpenter or I'm a plumber or electrician, I would absolutely go up to southeast Queensland and, and I get earn more money, it's cheaper to live up there, and probably the weather's better. Yeah, it's a better lifestyle. It's a better lifestyle. Right, and if, like you said, if you're in your 40s, you're probably uh, raising a family as well. The schools are really good up there, um, and it's much more relaxed, you know. And you, the Less hustle, traffic, the whole thing. Yeah, like the hustle and bustle of Sydney. Like I've, I'm, I'm a new father now, you know, and, um, you know, I, I, can, I can feel it, you know. It, it's hard to spend time with your family because you, you're constantly working and you're fighting through traffic and you're dealing with stressed out people. So it is very attractive. But going back to what you said about, um, you know, finding a tradie, which which has impacted our ability to price up projects profitably, which on a larger scale, like we collaborate with a lot of developers uh, in Australia, some of the best ones. And the general consensus is it's it's insanely hard to price up a project to get it profitable so they can sell it, which means there's no supply. Which means prices are going to continue to go up. Price That's what's happening now. Price continue to go up as demand goes up. So young fellow born in Newcastle, moved to the Central Coast, came down to Sydney, um, has had his fair share of ups and downs, but you've learned something really important about the property market and now you're doing something about it. You've written a book, you've got a podcast, you've got a business, helping people out. What's next? Uh, to continue to help people as, as much as possible. I mean, there are going to be challenges ahead. Um, as you know, with the interest rates, you know, in this unknown territory, are they going to raise it? Are they not? Uh, we've got to continuously figure out different strategies to duck and weave to keep us moving forward. The biggest thing at the moment is uh, repayments. You know, a lot of a lot of investors are scared because they don't know how to structure things correctly. So I guess I want to be there as a mentor and coach to try and keep people moving forward because. Eventually, rates will stabilise and they potentially might come down, who knows, one, two years. Um, and then what happens when rates go down? Prices go up. So um, there's always going to be challenges getting into the market. There's never going to be, I guess, perfect factors that's going to go, you know what, it's a perfect time to get into the market. There's always going to be some sort of challenge. So my job is to mentor people through that, push through that, get them to take action, just crack on with it rather than sitting back and debating whether it's the right time now or the right time later. And, and then find the investment that suits, that is what you can afford end yeah. of the day. Yeah. Because you don't have to buy on the east coast of Sydney. I mean, you know, you have to buy Bondi. You buy, I like your philosophy, you know, rent best, like buy where you can uh, afford to buy and live where you want to, and rent where you want to live. I quite like that. And particularly, and it doesn't matter if it means you're up, you're up the, the northern suburbs of, or well, the northern districts of Brisbane, eventually the prices bleed out into of course. those areas. They always do. Eventually. They always do. They always do. Assuming population keeps growing. Yep. And Australia's population always grows because we need more people in the country. Got so much, got so much room, and we need people to keep the GDP going. So our gross domestic product product relies on population growth. Yep. And governments are never going to stop population growth because they need to keep having good gross domestic pro product. Otherwise, we will never elect them again. If they start going backwards in GDP, we won't elect them. And the one thing is that in front of their mind. Re-election. Of course, of course. So That's good. all they think about. And I think we're going to evolve into a market where apartment living is going to be more accepted as well. And I think as us Australians, we're so hung up on wanting the big block of land and the house. And look, if you look at all those mature markets overseas, they've all adapted to apartment living. And that's just where we're going to head. That's that's the. But at least you have exposure to real estate. 
So just get in any way you can. You know what's interesting about that? As you get older, and you've got a long way to go, but as you get older, when you reach my age, you start to think, you know what? I quite like the idea of living in an apartment. I don't have to mow the lawns. I don't have to have someone come in every Friday and do you know maintenance and all that other stuff. There's you know, like forever. Um, uh, it's not the cost. It just means you know you, you, it's just easy to look after. You just lock it up and go on holiday. Lock it up, go to your farm. Lock it up and go to your place in you know southeast Queensland, Noosa, wherever it is you like to hang out on weekends. I think that lifestyle factor as we age, as our population ages, and we become more wealthy as we age, because we all go super, is that Australians actually going to start to really sort of embrace apartment living. I really do believe that. And whether it's in Brisbane, Sydney, Melbourne, wherever, I think Australia is going to embrace it. And, and it's already happening, Mark, right? It? Like if you, if you look at the most undersupplied asset type in the country right now, it's a three-bedroom apartment. Right. Try and rent one. They're very hard to find, right? Try and buy one. They're very hard to find because these developers generally produce more ones and twos because a lot more investors will buy them off the plan. So the three bedroom stock is actually very, very undersupplied. So if you can pick one of those up in a really good location in a, from a really good developer, um, I think you're going to do well going into the future because of our aging population. Because those downsizers, they don't have mortgages. Yeah. Right, they're paying cash for those things. Correct, and they'll so, pay whatever it takes to get it. Exactly, and there's a shortage. Always going to have change, and there's a shortage of a supply. So what happens? Shortage of supply. They're not using a mortgage. It's only going to go up in value. So unbelievable opportunities out there if you do your research. Yeah, that that'd be cool. That's that's about high demand, low supply. And you're right. Three bedroom apartments are not readily built and by developers. There's not that many of them in Australia, in particularly in Sydney. I, I don't know about the other cities, but particularly in Sydney. But the demand from them is growing. And, uh, and these are people with money, as you say, they don't borrow. They're actually got change left after they purchase this thing because they've already sold something. They've usually sold a house that they bought 40, 50 years ago for 150 grand. And they're probably selling it for five, 10 million. Tax Sounds free. ridiculous. And it's tax free. Mm -hmm. And then they just say, well, I don't care. I'll pay three, four million bucks for it. I don't care. I'll, I'll, I'll pay an extra 100 grand because we want it. We love it. Yeah. And they've still got change. They've, they've got a million dollars left over, 900000 It doesn't matter that much to them. They're Plus cashed they're the up. Super. I think that's the biggest growing, rising tide in this country when it comes to real estate. It's three-bedroom apartments in the major cities. Because they, they might say, oh, well, yeah, we'd like to go and have a place at Newcastle or up in Gosford, but we still like to be close to the kids. Yeah. So we're going to stay. We want an apartment in Sydney, and we want a room where the grandkids can stay. I, I'm talking about myself now. Yeah, or in my case, you need more than one room for the grandkids to stay because you don't want to be just living on your own. So you you need three bedrooms. Yeah. Plus a study. Yeah. Go above that, Mark. Try and find a four better. Oh, impossible. You know what I mean? So you look at all these mature markets across the world. They, they have four or five bedroom apartments. Why? Because the, that's where the demand goes to. And I think that's where we will head into the future. Good to see you, Zah. Thanks, Mark. Pleasure.